Hi, in this video we are going to use with properties of like to explain the interference phenomenon. In geometrical optics, we were using ray approximation and it was very good in explaining the image formation for mirrors and lenses. But with ray optics, we can't explain some other like phenomena such as interference where we have the presence of bright and dark fringes or diffraction where the light is spreading after it passed through a small opening as well as polarization where only certain direction of oscillation is allowed to propagate after light passed through a polarizer. Now let's have a look at the interference phenomenon as a result when individual waves combine. Two conditions need to be satisfied is the waves must be coherent, in other words they are at the same phase, as well as they are monochromatic, which means they are having the same wavelength. The result could either be constructive interference where maximum met with maximum or destructive interference where the maximum met with minimum. In classical Young's double slit experiment setup, a light source must pass through a single slit first to get a monochromatic and coherent source, then pass through double slit before interference pattern can be observed on the screen. With current technology, laser pointer can be used as coherent and monochromatic light source and the same result can be observed. Let's analyze this Young's double slit experiment further. Assume coherent and monochromatic light source travel from left and encounter the double slit. The slit separation is given by D, R1 is the light path for the upper slit while R2 is the light path for the bottom slit. At the screen with distant L, they met and interfere at point P with distant Y from the central of the screen, and this point P also at angle theta from the central of the slit. The pass difference delta is given by R2 minus R1 equal to D sine theta. The condition for bright fringe maximum met with maximum is given by D sine theta equal to M lambda where m is valid for 0, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, and so on and so forth. This m is known as the order number, where m equal to 0 is the zero's order maximum, and m equal to 1 is the first order maximum. The condition for dark fringe, maximum met with minimum, is given by d sine theta equal to m plus half lambda, where m is valid for 0, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, and so on and so forth. For dark fringe, there is no zeros order, and m equal to 0 is considered as the first order minimum. To determine the fringe's position y, we need to make a few assumptions that the distance l is greater than the slit separation d, while d itself is greater than the wavelength of light, the theta is very small, therefore we can use the approximation that the value of tangent theta is close to sine theta. From the geometry, tangent theta is equal to y over l, and therefore we can assume that y is equal to l sine theta. For the position of the bright fringe, we can combine the above equation with the condition for bright fringe. And finally, we get the position for bright fringe is given by y equal to lm lambda over d. Similar approach can be done to locate the position of dark fringe and it given by the following equation. It is interesting to know that from this analysis, if we have all the information from measurement value for lambda, which at the order of just hundreds nanometer can be determined with high accuracy. Now, let's have a look at the intensity distribution of the fringes. 
Bear in mind that the fringes have no sharp edges. The equation only provides the location for central, bright or dark. But we still can calculate the distribution of the light intensity across the fringes. From our previous assumption that the source must be coherent, therefore they must have the same frequency omega as well as constant phase phi. Let us assume that the wave from top slit carrying this property E1 reach the point P. The other wave from the bottom reach a bit later, representing by this E2. At point P, the total is given by E1 plus E2. By applying trigonometric identity, we have the following equation, where the first part provides the information on the magnitude of the resulting wave, and the later part reveals that it has the same frequency as the sources. For constructive interference, we have the magnitude twice the number of the source. It occurs when phase differ by 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, and so on and so forth. And this is consistent with the condition for pass different delta is equal to d sine theta. For destructive interference, we have the magnitude is equal to 0. It occurs when phase differ by pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, and so on and so forth. And this is consistent with the condition for parts different, delta is equal to m plus half lambda. For the intensity equation, we are going to carry some analysis further. As the path difference delta is given by d sine theta, bear in mind that this path difference is related to the portion of wavelength lambda. In similar way, we can relate the phase difference phi with the portion of cycle 2 pi. By relating their proportion, we can further manipulate to get this equation. As the intensity is directly proportionate to the square of the field, therefore we have the intensity is equal to i equal to i max cos square phi over 2. From the value of phi above, we can insert directly to get this. And from the sine theta approximation, we finally have the intensity equation in this form. And if we plot the intensity against wavelength, the graph will look like this, which basically the fringes that we observe on the screen.